Okay, Birds fans, here we go. We're going to unpack some ugliness that we saw on Monday night when the Eagles lost to Seattle. If my voice sounds a little raspy, it's not because I was screaming at the TV, which I was, by the way, but I've got a little uh, upper respiratory thing that seems to be sweeping through South Jersey and Philly, so bear with me. I want to uh, introduce my partner, longtime Eagles beat writer for uh, NJ.com and uh, the Trenton Times, Mark Eckel. I'm ex-Philadelphia Eagles tight end Ken Dunnick. This podcast is sponsored by Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine. Our January issue will hit the street on January 1st. Lots of great articles, including my friend Mark Eckel and his profile on Iowa coach Fran McCaffrey, who's got a lot of Philadelphia ties, and D-line him on the Sixers, Dave Spadaro on the Eagles, and a lot of great stuff. Well, look, look for that issue, and if you're interested in a subscription, go to jerseymanmagazine.com and uh, hit us up. We'll be glad to take care of you. And I also want to mention that we're recording this from the Sweet Recording Studios in Mount Laurel. If you have an idea for a podcast, please reach out to our friend Joe Gunjemi here at Sweet Recording, and he'll take care of you. So, Mark, um, for weeks now, I've been saying, well, they're 10-1. and 1. Well, it's only one game. Uh, everybody doesn't need to panic. It is time for concern. And uh, this team right now is a bubbling cauldron of finger-pointing, front office intrigue, the blame game, bad play, I'm going to go into it in detail, but your initial thoughts about Seattle. And by the way, you're the one to point it out that the the Eagles have never beaten Pete Carroll in their existence. And uh, that held true. As unlikely a scenario as it was, it held true on Monday night. Yeah, I, I told you that about a month ago that that was Seattle. I mean, I, I covered most of those games. So I, I remember a lot of those losses. Um, this was probably the toughest of all those. Um yeah, everything that you just said is true, and they're all bad things. Uh, losing is one thing. Listen, every every week, you know, teams get upset. Things happen. It's, it's the NFL. You know it better than I because you played in it. You, you don't win every game, and 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 you're going to have a couple clunkers, and you're going to have a couple things happen. The Eagles have had all that happen in the last three weeks. But with all that said, it's one thing to lose, but now it's a, yeah, the finger pointing starting a little bit now. They're they're firing people, although they didn't, uh, I guess they fired, they demoted them, I guess is a better term than fired. Well, let, 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 let's oh, jump into, the, let's oh, jump oh, into oh, that oh. right away. The the change of the de- defensive coordinator, excuse me, they replaced Sean Desai with Matt Patricia. To me, this reeks of front office. And let's go back in recent Eagles history when Doug Peterson was mutually agreed upon to leave the Eagles, right? It wasn't mutual. The Eagles uh, staff, Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman in particular, demanded that Doug uh, fire either one or two of his coordinators. I can't remember. Well, what happened uh, was, it's not that they, I don't know if you wanted them fired or Doug, was, they, they needed to hire new coordinators because Frank Reich left to mm-hmm. become the coach of the Colts and uh, Jim Schwartz decided to take a year away from football. So he needed two new coordinators. This is how, how, I, I remember it. If I'm wrong, let I'm sure one of our listeners will will let me know. But um, that was the case. So that Doug meets with Howie and Jeffrey, and Doug says, "Well, I want to promote Press Taylor to be my offense coordinator." And mm-hmm. I forget if we want it for for defense coordinator, but he, he wanted a guy on his staff. He wanted to to promote from within, which yeah. a lot of times that you know when you're doing well, which the Eagles were, they won a Super Bowl two years exactly. Ago. He Doesn't he well. deserve the right after winning yes. a Super Bowl to pick yes. his own coaches? Well, that's the thing. So. When Doug got hired, he was just happy to have to become a head coach. So he let them pick his staff. Yeah, that's, well, the, now that's Doug, the point. Exactly. But Doug now says, wait a minute, I'm a Super Bowl winning right. coach. I'm in elite category now. There aren't how many are there? I mean, in, you know, at, I mean, there aren't that many total in the history of the game, right? I mean, there's only 50 some winners, and a lot of them have won multiple. So there aren't that many guys that, who have won a Super Bowl. And active, there's only a handful. So Doug earned that right. Well, the Eagles didn't think he earned that right. They told him, no, you can't promote Press Taylor. And I forget the defense guy, but no, you can't yeah. promote him. We want you to go outside. We want to hire this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. Doug was like, wait a minute. No. Right. I'm." And then they, that that's how they mutually yeah. parted because Doug said, 
screw you. Um, and then Doug went to Jacksonville and he took Pre- and guess who was coordinators? Press tail. And and they the Eagles don't care about PR, and that's uh, kind of solidifies my view of not only the Eagles, but a lot of these NFL teams are hiring these up and comers that really have no leverage and will let the ownership dictate what they're going to do. The days of uh, uh, Bill Parcells and even even Bill Belichick, if he does get another job, which I assume he's going to leave New England, it'll be interesting to see how much control a team uh, gives him in particular. And uh, if they don't, he'll probably just walk away at, at that point. But um, I want to go down a, a laundry list of the, the Eagles' troubles. Um, and well, that, that, for, be, be, before you start, go that's going to take a while. That's going to yeah. take a long time. Yeah. Uh, like, but like, like you said earlier, when, when, when you started, it's one thing to lose a game. It happens. Like I said, it happens. But, you know, f- players are getting involved in, on social media with fan. Like that's, that's yeah, A.J. Brown blasting yeah, his critics not, on social. Yeah, not, How on. about Brandon Graham saying that the side move was media driven? That's nonsense. Yeah. No, yeah. It's just nonsense. You, you know, that, that, that kind of yeah. stuff is what losers do. And that's, that's yes. not the Eagles. That's not they're, our well, Eagles. They're, they're, they're becoming a mess. And Hertz says the offense is not committed. Explain that statement okay. to me. Not committed. What does that mean? Not committed. Does that mean? What it means. Does it that mean, mean players are doing holiday albums when they should be studying film? Does that mean everybody's not on the right page? I mean, I I didn't think the reporters pressed him enough on that comment after that. I mean, to me, that was well, a stunning revelation. They, they, they kind of followed up and said, well, "What do you mean by that?" Well, he needs a dictionary. I don't have committed. My I mean, that, they, yeah, that, that's really what he meant. Answer. I mean, he made it clear what he meant. Committed. He said, "Look it up." Committed. They're not. That that was. I thought that was as damning as any quote. Absolutely, gotten in a long, long time from from anybody with the Eagles to say that for him to for him to call out his teammates and say everybody's not committed. Well, this is the NFL. First of all, you should be committed from the day you walk on the field. And second, this is week. You're in the playoff hunt. You're you're trying to get. To, they're in the playoffs. I'm saying they're in the playoffs, yeah. and they're they're trying to be the number one seed. They're trying to get to a super, and they're not. There are guys that aren't committed. That's. Yeah, I, whether I, they I, are or not, the fact that he says it, my jaw so, dropped when I heard that. Yeah, I was like, um, "Whoa!" You know, a couple of weeks ago, Kenny Gainwell uh, texting criticism to a fan at halftime. I mean, that's just kind of stuff that you know the, the Eagles have to clamp down on because it's uh, it makes no sense. But on the field, let's break down what I think are the problems for the Eagles. And the first one is, you know, we 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 have supposedly by all these football experts the best offense and defensive lines in football. Well, they're not playing like it to me. I thought uh, the offensive line um, was adequate. I thought that they ran the football effectively, which is good, but they broke down in key situations, including the the Jason Kelsey penalty. Terrible. They're going to run the, the, the tush push. I mean, you know, I, I, do you call that? Yes. I, I, yeah, but I mean that. So that that type of mistake is a killer. Don't move uh, the ball. He moved uh, the ball yard forward. You can't, right. and he knows he can't. And he, and he had been and he had been warned about it too. Yes. By the way, which is well, that's uh, why you, if you're warned and you know it, don't move the ball. You've been around the league for 50 years now. You 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 know the rules. Come on, Jason. Our defensive line, um, only two sacks in the game. They don't really get much heat on the quarterback and. You know, I understand it was Matt Patricia's first attempt at defensive corner, and they did blitz a little bit more, especially in the first half. But they don't run any twists or stunts or games that I could see to free up. the, the If they're only going to rush four, you got to do something different. You just can't go man on man because it's too easy to protect. So, you know, our, our line play on both sides of the ball has to be better if the Eagles going to make a run in the playoffs. Oh, I couldn't agree more. The offensive line, like you said, uh, there's something wrong there, and it's been it's been wrong through the three game losing streak. It, it actually it wasn't great against Buffalo or Kansas City either. In those two wins, they they yeah. managed to win those games, but um, I don't know. Maybe I mean Lane's had his issues. He's not. I don't think he's having the, a Lane Johnson type year. Yeah, he's nicked up a little bit. And by the way, well, more injury well. news today. Landon Dickerson had surgery on his thumb today, so. There you go. He's going to be out for a couple. We're not going to put him on a, on IR, but he's going to be out for a little while. Right. Um, let, let's go to my next point, which is uh, our back seven, our linebackers and uh, defensive backs. 
They just can't cover. I mean, Bradbury is toast. Slay is hurt. Um, and when we miss tackles, I mean, listen, Brown is an athletic kid, right? But and and he moves around. I do like the way he moves around the field, but he he misses too many tackles. And 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 if you can't cover receivers, especially in the middle of the field, and you're going to let a guy like Drew Locke beat you on a 92 yard drive. Uh, I mean, to me, that that's unacceptable. And uh, we've talked about this for weeks. It's no revelation, but uh, the, the the problem is not getting better in my eyes. No, it's getting worse. Um, like you said, it's it's one thing to lose to San Francisco, who's playing lights out right now. They they look, you know, a lot could happen between now and the Super Bowl. But right now, they look like the best team in football. Oh, so one no thing doubt. To lose to them. They're the number one seat. They're they're the number one seat. Yeah, and and it's another and it's not losing in Dallas to the Cowboys, isn't a sin either. The way they lost wasn't great, but Dallas at home has been unbelievable as well. They're a great team at home. But losing to Seattle in Seattle, if they just lost the game, they got outplayed. Whatever. But like you said, to let Drew Locke, a career backup, Mm. a guy who had never won a game for Seattle. 0-4, oh, and four, yeah. I think it oh, was, yeah. starter. And the to Seattle go, lost four in a row going into the game. Yeah. By to the go way. 92 yards against your defense, that's a crime. That, that's, you know, they that's only had 116 yards passing the entire uh, game up until that point. He winds up with 208. If you're a good defense, you and, and they needed a touchdown. It's not like they only needed a field goal. You, you can't, a good defense does not allow Drew. I mean, that, you know. No timeouts, by the way. No timeouts, right? Oh, he, or he had one. He had, he had one timeout, right? Um, but still, I don't care if they had all three. Yeah. You, you can't let a backup quarterback go ninety-two yards. You, yeah. you just can't. You, that's that's not what a good defense does. So, hence, this isn't a good defense. To me, Jalen Hurts is making uh, bad decisions. By the way, Jalen Hurts is tied for the lead in turnovers for every play in the NFL. He's got seventeen turnovers, including twelve interceptions. But uh, to me, he's missing some very easy check down throws highlighted by the fact that on the last play of the game where he tries to go deep and throws a pick, if he flares that out to Gainwell, Gainwell's got about 15 or 20 yards in front of him, which actually puts him in field goal range. They had enough time to do that. And Hertz takes the de- deep shot into double coverage and, and gets picked. And, and that's just one example. I, I think um, I watched Brian Baldinger break down this game earlier this week, and Baldinger does a great job with this. And with the end zone shot, you can see that Hertz is panicking. At one point, he had a wide open pocket, and he ran out of the pocket anyway, when all he had to do was step up and either run or, or, or throw to an open receiver down the middle of the field. He doesn't do it, and he's just not the decision maker and he's not throwing with the accuracy that he did last year. Yeah, and I don't know what I, one of the one of one of the things I thought was a strength of Jalen Hurts, and why they got why he took him to the Super Bowl last year, and why he got him off to a ten and one start this year, was he made good decisions. Absolutely. Most, most more times than not, he did the right thing with the ball. He he didn't put it up for grabs. He didn't go deep when he had an open guy, or he didn't. If he, you know, he he threw the ball where it was supposed to be thrown, I'd say nine times out of ten, eight and a half times out of ten, which is pretty high percentage. Everybody makes mistakes. This is, you know, but has it has anyone asked? Was that his? I mean, was the call to go deep, or did he decide to go deep? I mean, is that to me? I mean, he still has the ball, even if even if the call is to to go deep, and you see that there's it's not there. Yeah, dump it off to gain one. Well, there, I mean, there's really no such. I mean, if you listen, if there's double coverage, you, you, you check it, right? you check it down. You yeah. you just don't do it. You, if you want to go deep, that's one thing. But if you see double coverage, and you see yeah, a back coming out of the backfield that's got nobody in front of them, it, to me, it's an easy decision. And and those are the types and of the decisions. The other interception was was just as bad when they had the ball in the lead, yeah. and they and they I would try to milk clock a little bit there, and just get you know, and he and he went deep. Um, he got picked off to, to Watkins. Yeah. Watkins. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, to me, um, this offense under Johnson is uh, elementary and way too predictable. I'll give you a couple of examples. And, and one is just a silly play and I, how he draws this up and how he gets this into game plan. I'll never know. He tries to throw a tight end screen to Goddard 
with Devontae Smith blocking. Devontae Smith is the smallest, maybe the smallest guy in the offense. He gets blown up by the defender, and the play gets blown up. Tell me how that design gets approved, not only by the offensive coordinator, but Nick Sirianni. Yeah, that's a good idea. To me, that's a silly play. The I, other the other example is how predictable they are. I don't know if you heard or saw this about uh, Christian McCafferty was on the Eli and Peyton hmm. version of the game. And he called to play when he saw the formation. He goes, oh, they're going to put the tight end in motion and run the quarterback draw here. And that's exactly what they did. Now, normally, offensive guys are studying other teams' defenses. If Christian McCafferty, who's an offensive guy, looking at the Eagles' offense and can tell you what the play is, what does that tell you? You know, then Pete Carroll knew what was coming, didn't he? Of course. All right. I mean, yeah. And getting back to the play that you said earlier, when I saw that play, I thought my first thought was the wrong guy caught it. I thought it was supposed to be a, a screen to, uh, wouldn't it be to better Smith? if Smith catches it and yeah, Goddard you, blocks? You would think Goddard would block and Smith would catch him. Right. And that, and maybe that's block. maybe that's right. Maybe there was a screw up. I don't know. That's part of my first thought was, oh, no, wait, why why did Goddard catch that? And Smith it, makes no, block? it made no it sense. No sense. It, it, you're, you're asking a guy that's 160-something pounds to block and the big guy to, to be the receiver. Were they trying to fool somebody? Because it didn't. Yeah. They didn't fool anybody. Now, you know, uh, let's give Hertz a little bit of slack because he did go into that game uh, sick. I guess. They never really said what it was. I'm assuming it was oh. flu-like yeah. symptoms and everything. And but there's an old adage in football: if you if you take the field, you got to play. You know, you got to win, regardless of whether you're sick or not. His numbers were very pedestrian. Again, 17 for 30, 143 yards. Uh, again, no touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, uh, Drew Locke, who to me is, you know, hanging on by his fingernails in the league, 22 for 33, 208 yards, one touchdown and no picks against the Eagles defense. That's wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when a guy like Drew Locke outgains you s- statistically in a game, and the key, um, no picks for Drew Locke. No picks. Super no no pressure. How are you going to, you know, you, if we can't get heat on the guy, he's going to stand in the pocket and, and find a target. We we have to find a way to get pressure on the quarterback. It's just that simple. Well, that's what the Eagles defense is based on, right? Is their, their front four. And like you said earlier, too, how they're not doing stunts or twists. Well, they, they think their front four is so good that they don't have that. They, we're just better than you, and we're yeah, just going to. Okay. Well, well, it's that, easy. And, it's and, easy to say. And that happened a lot. It did happen last year a lot. It happened early this year, where whether it's Sweat or Reddick or Cox or Carter or they, you know, they Hargra- Hargrave last year. Hargrave, oh, Hargrave right? Well, last year, yeah. yeah, they have talent. They're they're those guys are good. But guess what? Offenses, you know, Pete Carroll's been around a long time, and he, you know, he knows how to break down and break down the teams the uh defense so teams are teams are saying now okay maybe they keep an extra guy well i don't know what i'm not there and i'm not watching it close enough but teams have figured out that if you can block that front four you can have you can you can get some yards against this defense because like you said the back seven is not playing well at all so if you contain that front four give your quarterback just a little bit of time there'll be guys open and there there are guys open all night yeah, we got we have issues. I, I mentioned Landon Dickerson now has uh, had surgery on his thumb. He'll probably be out for at least a week or two. They're not going to put him on IR, like I said. But you know, Cam Jurgens didn't play last week. Uh, Eagles haven't come out with their injury updated injury report this week, so we'll have to check on that. You know, Darius Slay. By the way, more intrigue. They make Matt Patricia the defensive coordinator. All of a sudden, Darius Slay uh, go, goes yeah. on. Uh, the injured list with the knee surgery. You think you think there's anything to that? They don't, don't like you. They don't like each other. No, Slay can't stand Patricia. That's why he got out of out of Detroit. He he ripped him on the way out, and Patricia doesn't like Slay. He, that, that, you know, that's. I was surprised they hired Patricia as whatever his title was before. And how about this too? I mean, this is why this is what bothers me about Nick Sirianni and the Eagles organization. The size still has the title defensive coordinator. Yeah. Well, please. Who who are you for? Who are you you trying to kid? Well, listen, the reason that is is they probably wanted the side to leave 
why would Desai walk away from four years at one point five million? You can <laughs> you can call me anything you want for six million dollars, okay? So, yeah. there, so there's no way that's going to happen. No. So, but... and, and by the way, Sirianni, I like him. He's 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 disingenuous. Okay, he gets up there in front of that microphone and says it was my decision, but I can't remember what day I made the decision. Come on, man. Come on, seriously. Don't look me in the eye and tell me I'm pretty when I know I'm not. If you if you, you know what day you decided to make this decision, because Howie called you on the phone and told you to make the decision. Make. Exactly. So I get it. I get it. You got to play politics. You got to you got to cover up for stuff. But you know you know what's amazing, Mark, is that um, this team went to the Super Bowl last year, and I actually thought was a bad penalty away from winning the Super Bowl is actually an eyelash away from being 7-7 seven and seven this year. If you look at the last three wins, Dallas uh, was, we were the, the benefit of a couple replays. Kansas City receiver drops the ball uh, for a touchdown at the end of the game, and Buffalo went into overtime. Think about that. Think about the, the furor that would be going on right now if this team was 7-7. Seven and seven, and they very and easily the furor going on at 10-4 and four or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, you're right. That's And then even some earlier games. The Washington game, if Ron Rivera riverboat Ron, the riverboat yeah, yeah. Camera, well, terrible if he had a, call. If he had a set, he <laughs> go for two, two, win the game. I'm not right? saying they would have won it, but you got to take a shot. Washington, you're four and ten. Why not try to win that game on the road, right? I mean, so who knows? I mean, that we well, you know what? They lived on the edge for a lot of this season. Some people said it was smoke and mirrors, whatever. Well, they fell off the edge the last three weeks. Yeah, they're now that. I, I said to you prior to us starting the, the, the recording that they're going to win these last three games. I'll well, you're, more, you're more confident than I am. but Well, I just think those other teams are just – They're bad. The teams are bad. But at, right now, the yeah, Eagles are bad. Yeah, but their Eagles aren't that bad. No, but I'm, – Listen, I'm not listen. saying – If they were playing three other teams, I wouldn't – I don't know what I would think. But the Giants are not good. Tommy DeVito's 15 minutes are up. Well, the the point you know. spread kind of uh, yeah, back, backs well, up your theory yeah. because it opened at ten and a half and went to eleven and a half. Well, well, how 12. anybody? How is it twelve today? How anybody okay. could could comfortably lay twelve points with the way the Eagles are playing? That gives because you an indication the, of how bad the Giants well, are. I guess well, the Giants lost twenty four to six to New Orleans last week. They got sacked seven times. Devito had a little nice little run. It was a nice little cute story and. They exploited some Italian things, and I didn't. I, I was offended a little bit by that. But where you, uh, were you really? A little bit. I mean, yeah. I was, it was funny at first. You don't like the you don't like the manja stuff or whatever it is. You don't like the. I mean, you're like what? He's the first Italian guy to, to ever play in the NFL. I think he's <laughs> yeah. a guy named Dan Marino. Well, he's, Joe taking Montana. A, he's taking I mean, advantage wow. of his 15 minutes. Man. Yeah, he did. But now even he got a little bothered by it when they wanted him to do some sub, sub, soprano stuff or something. He's like, oh, no, enough's enough. I heard, anyway. didn't, I heard he just switched the agent too, by the way. I, oh, I, thought, I, I, I thought I saw that report in the okay. paper today. Um, but anyway, they're not. They're, they're beating the Giants. They're beating the Giants twice. And Arizona scares me a little bit because, first of all, John Gannon knows this offense pretty well. Yeah. And Kyler Murray can make very, plays. Very athletic. He can yeah, make plays. Yeah, you're he's, not very, he's erratic, he's but he, he's but very he can, erratic, he can, but he can make, make plays. plays. Yeah. But if, but if the weather, we'll see what the weather's like on New Year's. It's, I guess that, that, that's a New Year's Eve game, correct? Yes. New it's Year's a Eve. New Year's Day game. No, the Eagles, it's, it's yes. on Monday. It's on yeah, Sunday. The, the, I, I, I think the game, I'll look it up real you quick while right. we're talking here, but I, I, thought I, thought the, I thought the game was New Year's Day. You might, you might be right. Um, um, it is. Oh, you're right. It is uh, Sunday the 31st. Right. right. So, the, if the weather's cold, I I never like a team coming from where it's going to be like 80 degrees in in, in Phoenix. Yeah. And come until if it's 25. So, they're going to win these last three games, and and they're going to win the division. But but again, with that said, they might play Seattle again in the playoffs. Yeah, that would and be well. Hope, I'm not uh, sure but, they can beat Seattle. Well, we, I think we could beat them at home. But uh, mm-hmm. getting, getting back to your Mark point, Pete Carroll has as many wins in Philly against him as he does in Seattle. Getting back to your point about cold weather, it's uh, it's a little bit overblown for a couple reasons. Number one is a lot of these players come from colleges that they're used to playing in cold weather. Oh, yeah. So just because they happen to be playing in in Arizona right now doesn't mean they they can't play in cold weather. And number two, 
When you're playing a football game and you're trying not to be killed, you don't feel a thing. You don't. When you're on the field, you don't feel. Now, when you get off the field and you're standing on the sideline, like I used to do for most of my career, it gets a little chilly over there. But the guys that are on the field, it's um, it, it's a different animal. I always thought that was a factor both ways. You know, cold well, it's a good talk. It's a good talking point. It's a good uh, thing for podcasts for guys like us to talk about <laughs> and the media and all that stuff. So, um, but again, so it, but, but but my point I was trying to make was even if if they do win these three games, and I, like I said, I think they will. If they don't, if they lose any one of them, then they're then we really got to start looking at looking hard at what's going on and looking at Nick Sirianni and everything else. But wouldn't that be something? What a, what a quick fall from grace that would be, wouldn't it? Well, if you lose to one of these teams, you already lost to the Jets. And I'll give you that. Okay, we're going to have to happen. You can't lose another one of these games. Yeah. So, if but again, if they, even if they win the three and they're 13 or 40, win a division, I don't know if winning these three games solves, is it, it just presents you with maybe a false sense of security. Oh, we're okay now. We won three in a row. No, you're not because you beat three awful teams. And those teams aren't going to be in the playoffs. You're not going to see the Giants or the Cardinals. You're going to see Seattle again or the Rams who are playing very well right now. Or and then the, maybe the Lions and eventually the Cowboys and 49ers who just beat the heck out of you. I, I also think that we kind of misjudged how important changing coordinators are from season to season. Number one, uh, this guy Johnson, the Eagles offensive coordinator, he really doesn't have any experience calling plays in the NFL. I know he's hurts his buddy. They go back a long way. That doesn't really qualify you to be a play caller in the NFL. And if you look at the success that uh, mostly uh, Steichen, whose uh, Colts are playing great this year, he's, he's uh, he looks like he's a heck of a coach. And, you know, Gannon, uh, you know, they beat Dallas. They, they've got a depleted roster, but – you know they're 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 not. Uh, there's a I think there's a future there for Gannon. So so losing these two guys and replacing them with these two guys, I think meant more than we possibly thought. Do you agree with that? Oh, hundred percent. I I thought that. I said that. It's hard to lose both coordinators. Yeah. And I wasn't. And I'll be honest. And I'm. And this isn't hindsight because I've said it. I wrote it. I didn't. I didn't love either hire. I thought they did the. I would have done the opposite of what they of what they did. They they went out and got a defensive coordinator, who resume wasn't that impressive to me. He was, he was with the Bears for the a little Bears, bit. yeah, under the Nagy, Bears. yeah. And then he was one year in Seattle, and Seattle's right. defense wasn't so so great last year. So they they hire Sean Desai. I know he's a Temple guy and all that kind of stuff, but again, Temple, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when they went out, could have gone, could've gone anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they hired Desai. I would have promoted Denard Wilson, who the players seemed to love. The players yeah. were painting for him. Now he and then he goes to Baltimore, and he's doing a good job with the Ravens. I mean, they're Boy, the best. They, the yeah, they look good. Baltimore. I might have. Good. I would. I may have promoted from within on defense. And then offense, like you said, they 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 hire Hertz's buddy, which I never I never think that's a good thing to mm. hire a quarterback's buddy because. He, he's not going to rip Hurts. He's that's yeah. his boy. He, yeah. I mean, and I'm not saying Hurts deserves to be ripped. I'm just saying, well, but, and like, no experience as as a play caller. Um, he was in college not that long ago. I would have gone outside the organization and hired, I don't know who now. I mean, but I remember I had names from before. There were some experienced offensive coordinators available that during the off season that uh, mm -hmm. I would have done the opposite of, I would have promoted from the, on the defensive level and I would have gone out and gotten someone on, on off. Yeah. Yeah. might've been good. the best idea, but, uh, but here's the deal. If you think we vented this week, if the Eagles lose oh, next no. week, then you're going to really have something to, to hear because they lose tomorrow, to the Giants at home. Yeah. We're all, wow. are we off the bandwagon wow. at that point? I mean, uh, no, there's no bandwagon. The bandwagon yeah. is in the shop getting, Getting a, getting an overhaul. You can't well, lose the Giants at home. You just well, can't. Let's. Uh, I, I think you're right. I think they'll handle that game. I do think they'll beat Arizona at home, and I then we'll see what the Giants uh, have left at the, the last game of the that season. That game may not mean anything. Yeah. Depending on what if, – if, if the Eagles win two and – Dallas has Miami and Detroit the next two games. Right. Dallas were to lose. Right. Both then of the them. Eagles, then the Eagles would, yeah, and I, the Eagles I, I, would, yeah, the Eagles would win the division regardless right. and, of what happens. And they wouldn't. And if San Fran wins the next two, yeah, they're not going to catch San. They they're might not, be locked in as number they're not, two. They're not going to catch San Fran. San Fran. I don't, I don't think so either. But I'm just saying they may not. 
that game, that last game may not mean anything. We tell you something how important that is. If we played San Francisco at home and we're healthy and clicking on all cylinders, we proved it last year. That's a game we can win. We can't beat them in San Francisco. I don't think there's any way this Eagles team can beat San Francisco and San unless there's a total metamorphosis. So something happens, things change, but right, yeah. all, all signs are pointing to uh, to uh, a tough road ahead for if the everything's Eagles. Everything's equal. You're right. The Niners are. Or a better team, but again, it's football. Yeah, anything can happen. Football, it's an bounce. oblong ball; it bounces funny. Hey, hey, Mark, that went. Hey, we actually went over time. That was a fun discussion. Wow. It went quickly. Uh, we'll uh, be back here next week, and hopefully, talking about an Eagles win for my partner, Mark Eckel. I'm Ken Dunnick. Thanks for listening to the Bird Brains with Ken and Mark. Everybody, we'll check in next week. Take care.